Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, the state, and more. Let's kick things off. Uh, it is looking much better outside in these days, but of course, as spring comes along, it is time for our, the, all that precipitation to start falling down. We're kicking things off with a showers likely today, 60% chance of showers, but most of your temperatures are going to remain into the 40s all week long. Your high is going to be 49, your low is going to be 32, but of course, your low will get a little bit lower, maybe just barely below freezing temperatures, so you're going to have some 29, 28 degree temperatures Thursday, Friday, but as for the rest of the week, you'll have uh, temperatures into the mid to high 40 degree temperatures so you have to you guys have that look to look forward to and then i'll give you another update of course uh later on this saturday i mean this friday for my other part of my morning show but of course let's talk about some of the top news that are happening um around the world so the top story right now stephen hawkins is uh is dead after 76 years of life Stephen Hawkins died just this morning um, at the age of 22 Professor Hawkins was only given a few years to live after being diagnosed with a rare form of a motor neuron disease with his mind intact he managed to shape the way we see the world by thinking beyond what we see and touch to discover the theory of, of black hole radiation which is what he was renowned for uh, the radiation is usually uh, when you see a black hole the radiation around the black hole and the uh, subsequent uh, fade and decay of nothingness that comes afterwards. So much to his discredit, he was never honored a Nobel Peace Prize as a physicist. Um, his family said he died peacefully this morning. Uh, the Motor Neuron Disease Association, of which Professor Hawkins has been a patron since 2008, reported that the website had crashed because of an influx of donations to charity. In local news, uh, this is more probably like state news, if you're a hunter and you're looking to shoot a bear, well, you may need to uh, kind of Keep your eye on this because a federal ju district judge derailed a docket full of legal pr uh, preliminaries about removing the grizzly bear from Endangered Species Act protection on Tuesday in hopes of getting the whole matter decided before Wyoming and Idaho open grizzly hunting seasons this fall. So we still have plenty of time, but you never know. 700 grizzly bears were de delisted in the Yellowstone areas, and of course, there has been uh, always been much leeway for ranchers slash farmers to shoot grizzlies if they do oppose a threat to their property and their livestock. Um, judge Dana Christian, uh, District Judge Dana Christian said in an article in the Missoulian that he his reason behind the ch um, change from federal uh, protections to state would reduce protections for grizzlies and pushing the deadlines closer to the potential hunting seasons would invite last minute requests for restraining order and injunctions. Uh, public comment period has been put in place um, until April 30th to analyze the comments from Fish, Wildlife uh, and Parks and, and then earlier add more findings to existing uh, delisting rule or start the process of withdrawing it. So basically, they're just trying to find some more information about this, even though they have a bunch of uh, experts from either side, those who are proponents for delisting and those who are against it. So in state news, um, speaking of more uh, politics and more things that are happening on here, this is on the last day for candidates to get their names on the belt for this year's election. A few dozen more people signed up to run for seats in the Montana legislature, and the races for U.S. Senate and House got a bit more interesting with some last-minute Green Party and Libertarian candidates. Uh, from Hel This is from the Helena Independent Report, where people go to Helena to register as Democrat or Republican on the primary. The primary happens this summer, so you guys get to choose. It narrows it down, then became more of just like per uh, one person representing their party for the a per district and area so there's a whole lot of things going on here I'm not going to mention the people by name because I don't care <laughs> eight folks are campaigning for the Montana Senate primary against Senator John Tester who would be running for his third term he uh, was elected back in 2008 um, of course uh, house Wait, was it 2008? I believe it was 2000. No, it was 2006. My bad. So this would be a third term. I'm just doing the math in my head. Of course, uh, House Representative um, um, Greg Gianforte will be running to keep his seat against nine Democrats who are fighting for the primary this summer. Out of Bonner, a state senator uh, representative stopped by to talk with the community for a brief um, I'm here statement. Along with uh, them, there are 292 people trying to 
fill the state legislature seats, which uh, total about there's 100 seats available, and there's 25 state senates that are up for election this year. Uh, the next legislature section will be on January of 2019 when they meet up for bills and laws passing for the, on the state level. So in national news, uh, part of the national push to get people talking about gun control and regulations, many schools are planning a walkout this morning, including MCPS. Uh, the plan is to leave the school or at least gather in the hallway for 17 minutes of silence. That's one minute for each victim in the last month's scooting in Parkland, Florida. Organizers have posted their demands online, including an assault uh, weapons ban and expand background checks. Uh, so wrote a two to a seven to two majority of the U.S. Supreme Court in 1969 after hearing the case of Mary Beth Tinker, uh, the Des Moines teenager who had worn a black armband to school in protest of the Vietnam War, and school leaders suspend, uh, uh, suspended her for this. So, of course, the court sided with the Tinker because the justice's reasons her protest does not uh, merit and sub sub substantially disrupt the work and discipline of the school. A walkout, though, is not an armband and likely exceeds the students' free speech protections. Some schools have promised not to punish students who walk out. Others have said that they walk out be considered an unexcused absence and punished accordingly, um, usually gently, according to some of the school officials. Many other schools are not uh, um, uh, are against this. Um, so a lot of schools are for this, but would not want to take an unbiased side. So the whole idea is that, of course, instead what MCPS is doing here in the city of Missoula is they are uh, having a request to have the students have permission forms from their parents uh, in a press release that they released earlier just this past week uh, when they're going to announce this walkout that's going to happen at 10 a.m. this morning, just as soon as this show is over. So that's kind of the top things that are happening in the world, in the news and all around. So I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to switch over to some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, I got a couple art clips for you guys later on the show because these are, uh, uh, these are the last times I'm going to be able to play these art clips. So when I return, I'm going to talk about some city council where they're talking about a boulevard versus sidewalk um, uh, right of way uh, approval by the city council. Stay with me. It's going to get exciting. But what they did uh, in that vicinity where the Emanuel massacre took place. They opened a hospital and it was for men by black women and black males, but it was for black people. And the reason why this hospital was so important was because the white hospital refused to accept any black patients. Just flat out would not accept them. This black hospital formed relationships with the White Women's Benevolent Society. And the white women in Charleston, South Carolina, provided funds for the hospital as long as the nursing, the students in nursing, receiving nursing training would come to their homes and take care of them when they became ill. All right, you ready? Yes. You need to give you like a countdown? Just go for it. We're ready. We're ready. All right. Perfect. Have you ever wanted to learn how to play the ukulele around the campfire? <laughs> how about painting Ukrainian eggs? How about indoor pickleball? <laughs> We're talking about the Lifelong Learning Center, Missoula County Public Schools Adult Education Division. The mission is to make sure when people attend classes, they embrace lifelong learning from generation to generation. So with the Lifelong Learning Center, they have found that many people have had adverse learning experiences throughout their life, such as if you've tried ever tried pole fitness or pole dance. <laughs> At the Lifelong Learning Center, they offer quality classes at an affordable price to learn such things as beginning pole fitness, etc. <laughs>
it would take an act of Congress. That doesn't mean that couldn't happen. You know, and the Merced is, is, the, is the, the critical flashpoint of conflict right now as well. And on the Merced, it's not a whole lot of mileage that's at risk, but we regard, we regard it as a very dangerous precedent. You know, if they're able to take a river, it would be like if you took a national park out of the national park system. It would be a really bad precedent. Well, what about those that were created by the signature of the secretary? The, Are they endangered uh, by uh, another secretary? We, we don't, no, we don't think so. That, it's pretty clear that that would require an act of Congress to rescind. At least we hope so. You know, wild and scenic rivers are not, have not yet been targeted by the current administration. And, uh, but related things have, like the mining withdrawal I mentioned on the North Fork of the Smith. You know, we, we got that the last year of the Obama administration, and that's now threatened by, by Interior Secretary Zinke, who's been asked by Representative Bishop of Utah to consider undoing the mining withdrawals that the Obama administration did. Missoula City County Health Department uh, had an update in a public hearing in the city council meeting to update what is considered uh, kind of like an unnecessary alert uh, slash task that uh, that they inform the citizens here in Missoula. So let me just go over to my cheat sheet and just kind of explain to you what they're kind of updating in terms of their ordinance. The health board recently approved a change in one of Missoula's city county health I mean, air rules regarding wildfowl smoke episodes. The need to revise the language came about through uh, conversations with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, uh, who expresses concern that the uh, existing wording was too vague and appears to waive all their air pollution control measures during a smoke episode. Uh, while the health department disagrees with this conclusion, uh, they decided that they could better describe what actions we take during a wildfire season smoke episode. The impact of the rule doesn't change with the revision, either way, when wildfire smokes are filling the skies, we do not have to uh, set in motion the air segnation and emergency episode uh, avoidance plan, and that is targeted at limited winter air pollution sources such as local industry operations and wood stoves. So the whole idea is uh, this is kind of like a nice kind of brief over. Here is uh, Shannon uh, Thoreau uh, explaining a little bit more about this episode. It's not going to do any good to really try to shut down uh, sources that are not why we have pollution. Uh, we don't want to get telling folks to stop using their wood stoves in August because they probably aren't using their wood stoves in August, and that is not our source of pollution, and we wouldn't be able to do anything to improve anybody's health by putting those sorts of rules into effect. So our current rule 4.102 was adopted back in 2010, uh, and it has been what we've used for the past several years for issuing health advisories instead of calling air pollution alerts and warnings. I was brought to our attention by the EPA uh, while they were looking at our PM10 redesignation request that it's a little bit vague. Uh, and they asked if we could take a look at this rule and put in there what we actually do, uh, codify our current actions during a wildfire smoke up event, uh, and also define what we mean by wildfire smoke episode. Uh, so our changes to Rule 4.112, there's a lot more words, 
Uh, the intent is still the same. The actions are still the same. Uh, what it does is it codifies our actions, which are issuing health advisories, um, using science and scientific and meteorological data to determine that, yes, this is a wildfire smoke event, to understand what's going on with the smoke and, and uh, issue our best advice based upon that. And it uh, really clarifies that although we may be waiving the air pollution alerts, alerts and warnings, the entire rest of our uh, program does remain in effect. Um, All right. So basically they just, uh, the whole idea is they don't want to um, um, harass you just because uh, you lit a wood stove, uh, which to a wildfire is the equivalent of scratching your 5 o'clock shadow. Uh, moving on, Drew Larson developed services uh, from developmental services, talks about a sidewalk versus boulevard decision that the city will have the final say on. And this is part of the meeting that they were talking about. Here's a little background here with Drew Larson. Uh, there's been a, you know, multiple conversations over the last few weeks, um, and we were asked to provide two additional conditions for council's considerations. And that is one, provide a 10 foot wide boulevard area with a minimum of seven foot wide cleared sidewalks on Front Street and then prioritize boulevard landscapes on Adams and Jefferson. So if council chooses to go forward with uh, the staff recommendation, which is the four conditions, that recommendation is in the original referral. But if you choose to go with these, there would be a revised, uh, a revised motion. All right, so that was Drew Larson kind of uh, giving a little bit about that. The city council has the final say in what's happening there. So, of course, here's the thing upon the request by library officials. They wanted to create a side street parking that would allow access to the library directly. But with the boulevard, there's always that, like, 5 to uh, 10 feet area in which there's grassy and then there's trees. So a lot of times people who need to get from the car, people who are ADA or people or mothers who have a stroller who need to get – right there, right then, need to be able to have access to the library. So a lot of things where they're happening here is that they want to uh, basically increase the boulevard, which would have that tree line for shade and stuff like that along a, a, only some sides of the street, while other parts of the road wouldn't be boulevards, but would be more of a kind of like a drop-off port area, kind of like where uh, they drop off uh, uh, the bus stops for Mountain Line and whatnot. So anyways, uh, the issue, mind you, is not that folks are concerned with the boulevard would be used as a, but the is concerned that the boulevard would be actually used as a snow pile to move snow out of the street during winter seasons. Of course, anyways, the idea thus far ha uh, to have a drop-off zone off of Jefferson Street across the library uh, was up on this. So Jordan Hess reflects on this. The library is going to build a best-in-class facility. I trust that. Um, I have strong faith in the library's management, um, and I am always impressed with the programmatic offerings of the Missoula Public Library. I do think it's the role of this body to situate this project in the broader context of, of our downtown area. Um, and the library is in a very interesting transition zone between, um, on, on, the, on one corner, it is uh, squarely in downtown. It's got one foot um, in the downtown area, and it's got another foot in this historic uh, neighborhood, which is a transitional area um, with, with longtime residences and, um, and uh, transition to river area and parkways. Um, so I think it's appropriate for the council to consider the broader context of, of this area um, in, in crafting these conditions. That said, I have no, I have, uh, like I said, I have strong faith in the library team and the library project, and I have no desire, nor do I think it's appropriate for us to place any additional conditions inside the, the right-of-way boundaries. Um, this is about the public right-of-way. All right, so that was Jordan has kind of given a reflection on um, the library's plans and uh, the landscaping in which the city are having some say into it along with uh, Montana Parks and Rec. So, of course, if you missed the biggest change that is happening in the downtown area that are on Front and Main Street, once one-way streets will now become two-way streets. So there will be just like Pine Street, there will be like Spruce Street. Um, the downtown area is going to change in terms of that. So Main Front Street, just so you guys know, is not going to be one way, one going one way, the other going another way. It's going to be basically just kind of crossing a two-way street. Uh, with a decision in place, the library will be given a broader guidelines to be trusted to create a library that works in our terms while being able to have a safe and easy access to the library. Um, this is Gwen Jones, and she talks about the boulevard. We have boulevards whenever we can have them included, and that's a value 
it's aesthetically beautiful to have a tree canopy with a boulevard as well as a much better walking experience. We want to encourage walking as well as give a nod to the residential section that is surrounding this section of the library because people will continue to live there for many, many decades and there should be a smooth transition into this area. So thanks for making the motion, Jordan. I'm in favor of it and I am greatly looking forward to seeing our beautiful new library go in and I think it's going to be fabulous. All right, so that was Gwen Jones. And that will wrap up uh, everything um, you need to know about what's happening within the city. Of course, the motion was approved to vacate the right-of-way and continue on this site plan for the library as it uh, starts construction as soon as the snow melts, uh, along with many other projects that are starting. This is going to be a big year for projects. The Fort Missoula Regional Park will be um, pretty much soon wrapping up phase two this uh, coming spring. As Of course, uh, this coming April is when they're uh, slated to finish phase two. And then, of course, phase three, which is the dog park and all that stuff, shall be completed hopefully before the end of 2018. So be, uh, be on site for that. Um, of course, you can find out more of these meetings and more during the committee uh, meetings that are happening today um, on MCAT, basically all starting now, or sometimes it starts as early as 9 a.m., sometimes it starts at 10 a.m. It really depends upon the meeting and how long they're slated for, um, and they usually go until the afternoon. These are the committee meetings. If you want to find out uh, how you can watch these committee meetings live, Go up a channel, channel 190. But of course, if you want to um, have access to an online uh, forum so you can have access to it, you go to ci.missoula.mt.us. MT, this website is an amazing website. It brings all my information and how I can gather uh, basically all my notes. Uh, you go to your government. You, uh, I'll just zoom in a little closer. I go to your government, make sure it goes down. You bring your mouse under city council to agenda webcast minutes and it brings you to this wonderful 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 page that basically gives you an, a list of all your agendas items committee of the whole urban growth commission oh that's new to me maybe i'll check that out parks and conservation public works community of the whole land use and planning public safety and health all these meetings happening pretty much all this morning and it looks like most of these meetings will be done by noon today sometimes they uh end at noon um but community of the whole Looks like it's going to be a nice 17-minute uh, meeting. So, of course, you guys can um, go uh, and click on any of these links right here. Right now, currently, Parks and Conservation is going on, as you can see. Um, this says Live Video, and you'll be able to click on it and actually watch the live video as it happens there as well. If you are also interested in finding out more information about my morning show and other uh, links to interviews and more, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. I post it on YouTube, Facebook, and I tweet it. Um, all you got to do is look up Wake Up Missoula on Google, and you'll be able to find it on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, you can find me on MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything Missoula programs, including lectures, um, talks, concerts, um, MCPS, uh, educational videos, health, uh, government, all sorts of these wonderful things. We're a peg station. Three things, public, educational, government, all sorts of wonderful things coming right at you. All you have to do is go to MCAT.org to access those. Oh, yeah. And also, I uh, just want to mention the, a couple MCAT announcements. Um, MCAT is hosting Spring Flicks, which is a camp that's happening um, spring break. So if you are sticking around having a staycation and, uh, or you're working that time and your kids are out of school and you need a, a place for them to go and create, MCAT's the place to be for Spring Flicks, $150 per kid, and it's for a whole week. So that's basically $30 a day, uh, seven hours a day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., basically the hours that you'd go to school and it happens and we basically create and make short films um stop animations all sorts of things uh basically just think of it as a media arts camp and kids get to create and we show them how to create we show them some of our stuff and then maybe they will use that to create some of their own stuff and get inspired to uh, make videos and stuff so it's always a cool fun experience editing is definitely one of my all-time passions and um I'm going to talk about events pretty soon, but I want to show you uh, 
uh, this uh, this one art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. And then when I come back, I'll talk about events and show you another art clip, more events. And then I have a special dub and stuff happening today as well. It's not that special. It's just some of the dub and stuff. So anyway, stay with me. Here is um, art clip by our very own Rick Phillips. <laughs> Now it's time for your Wednesday event. Starting as early as this morning, you guys can go out and enjoy some gymnastics with your kids at Missoula, 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 Missoula sorry, Missoula Obligata, uh, Missoula <laughs> Indoor Sports Arena, uh, Mismo Gymnastics and Roots Acro Sports Center. All this happening from 9 to about 12 today. So it happens at any of those three places. Fun times, all great things happen there on Pi Day. Today is Pi Day 3 a colon 14 3.14 all sorts of wonderful things happening for your day book madness at the big sky branch round two Muzo public library uh hosts big sky march madness style tournament of books uh returning yet for another year 64 books titles so now they're down to about 32 um they started last week and this is uh have genres like sci-fi mystery horror fantasy and more be sure to vote for your favorite online at org slash branches slash big dash sky of course you can go to missoulapubliclibrary.org to find this link as well so be aware of that so of course it started march 7th and be entered to win prizes you can call the branch at 728-2400-8605 for more information so um 728-2400 is the quintessential mcps phone number so the extension that you guys should know is 8605 for more information pets where grief meets love Starting, um, this is an online course. If you have an animal as family members and uh, have most probably experienced their passing at some point or will in the future, it's a difficult time at best. It brings this up distressing and difficult feelings for all of us, all kinds of uncomfortable feelings, which we'd rather avoid. We, call, uh, we are called to make decisions immediately, and sometimes the decisions we need to make are literally life and death. Is it even possible f to be prepared for this? Pet grief can be difficult to handle simply because we want our beloved animal pals to be with us forever, and we are also aware of that some level are not possible. So this event is happening starting an online at 10 a.m. Uh, so this is through an online course. Let me just kind of uh, double check some things real quick because it gets very vague. It doesn't really tell me anything else besides that. So the whole the whole idea of this is you can get tickets by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, so the whole idea is it kind of gives you a rundown and everything that you need to know. This is uh, this is your link. This is a workshop. Janet Roper. And it's $35. Okay. So anyways, uh, let's talk about some other events that are happening in the Missoula area. MCPS walkouts do start at 10 a.m. this morning. 70 minutes of silence to recognize the 17 uh, people who were killed in the Florida shooting. So uh, that's going to happen starting at 10 a.m. Uh, kids... Uh, uh, MCPS sent a press release um, and, uh, basically saying that if a kid wants to walk out and be participating in this, they must get a parent's permission to do so. 
Tiny Tales are at 10 a 10:30 a.m. at the Missoula Fresh Market. Uh, not, why, why did I say Missoula Fresh Market? It's Missoula. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Tiny Tales. Um, at, it's going to be at Empower Place, which is sponsored through Empower Montana and also the Missoula Public Library, and it's at the Missoula uh, Food. Uh, Mizzou Food Bank. So Mizzou Food Bank just across the street from Westside Lanes and it starts at 1030 this morning. Uh, Scrabble Bridge at the Missoula uh, Senior Center starting at 1230. Um, middle School Writers at 330 in the afternoon. This is for kids who want to improve their writing skills and to kind of show off their writing skills to each other and also under the guise of the Missoula Public Library and they also have a uh, contests and stuff that it can show you what to get involved with and how some of the times it's always uh, in Bizzo Public Library hosts these writing contests which kids can win some money for some of their writing. So, so you can check that out. It happens pretty much every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Teen Writers Group is usually Friday in the afternoon. Youth Soccer League. So if you want to get physical right after school, Indoor Sports, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena have a youth soccer. They offer uh, recreational leagues for um, ages, all age groups from 8, 10, 12 age groups. Register online at MissoulaIndoor.com. You can call them at 531-3331. So that's 331-531-3331. And adults, they have another class at 6 p.m. But if you want to go to a glass fusing orientation class and not be as physical running around with your um, indoor sports arena, even though that it's uh, indoor, indoor soccer is a lot smaller field than the outdoor soccer, you can go to some glass fusing orientation class at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center. They have a new art installation there. You can check it out. And also, you have a new, uh, new date option. The whole idea is their glass fusing orientation class is a great way to have fun with the added bonus of learning a new skill. Students will learn all the basics from how do, uh, the kin kilning process works to design slumping fusing mold use glass aftercare and, and be oriented to the tools and glass available in their class fusing studio. So the whole idea is that once you go through orientation, you basically can set up a time and ma basically make your own glass fusion after a while. This is a two hour orientation class. It's wonderful, great. Also tonight as well, it started at 5.30, MCAT has our orientation. So if you want to get involved with media arts, video, um, stop animation for some people. People like stop animation, and it's a great way to get involved here with MCAT as well. We're always looking for prospective uh, volunteers to help with um, live streaming broadcasts and all sorts of things happening here. Um, you can get involved with that um, here at MCAT every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Um, is your kid dealing with peer pressure? The Families for Children Museum is hosting a... Uh, Helping your child handle peer pressure. Uh, this class is, will be held at Washington Middle School from 615 to 815. Responding to peer pressure is part of a human nature, but some kids are better equipped to resist than others. This workshop will identify and define what peer pressure is and why it's hard to resist. It will also help you help your kids learn to think of themselves and walk away when necessary. And middle age is such a intense group for sure because, I mean, some of the kids that come through here at, at MCAT who are teens – uh, tell about some of their experiences with dealing some things that they had to uh, deal with in middle school with peer pressure, that decisions that they made positively while they know a couple of their friends who haven't made those right decisions who are struggling in life now. So, and they're only in high school. So just think about it. It's uh, uh, these are the, the the more you can equip yourself with information, the better. So it's a great thing. Families for Children Museum is a great way to stay connected within your family and other families as well. Of course, tonight is a comedy benefit at the Roxy, so it's Pi Day Queer Comedy Benefit. It is 3.14, and you know what that means. This Pi Day, Missoula's homegrown comedy and the Big Sky Pride are teaming up for this knee slapper of a show featuring the best and brightest Montana sound of comedians from all across the LGBTQ spectrum. In honor of a stupid math joke, uh, th we'll be raffling off d delicious homemade pies. All funds raised will benefit Empower Montana's Youth Forward and be your crew to support LGBTQ youth in Missoula. And just so you know, for Diversity Day is happening April 14th, which is Saturday. I'm assuming um, this will probably be added to uh, one of their rosters um, along the Diversity Day that's happening at the Missoula Art Museum this year. I just talked to one of them. Uh, they're, uh, they're here. They're queer. And getting, come get some pie. Doors open at 7 p.m. The show is at 7.30 p.m. And it's $5 cash donations. And it helps support LGBTQ, um, Empower Montana, 
and all sorts of wonderful organizations that helps people. So of course, uh, this week is the last week for 39 Steps at MCT. This play, uh, uh, originally written by Alfred Hitchcock, um, becomes a comedy Broadway uh, extravaganza with six people playing over 100 different kind of parts. Um, enjoy this uh, mystery, comedy, Broadway, um, acting experience at the MCT happening, uh, b but be aware that uh, viewer discretion is advised for people who are 13 and over. Um, so to just letting you guys know, and this happens 7.30 every single night. There's some matinees on Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m., and then they have an earlier night show at 6.30 on Sunday. So that kind of concludes all your Wednesday events. There's definitely a lot going on here, and I talked a lot about that, so I'm just going to skip ahead, and this is the last time I'm going to be able to show you this art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts because Gallery of the Visual Arts always has a changing um, spectrum of artists so you want to check it out as soon as possible every week it kind of seems like they have a new artist so this is your today is your last chance to check it out even though it ends on the 15th usually on the day when the art exhibit closed they usually have a tendency to take it down the day of so today may be the actual last day to show the uh, art exhibit at the Gallery of the Visual Arts and the Social Science Building at the University of Montana so when I come back, I'll talk about your Thursday events and then wrap up the show with dub and stuff. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, huh. All right, so <laughs> let's. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that weird yoga thing or whatever. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> family fun time starts at the Y at 9 a.m. this morning. Uh, Thursday morning, sorry. <sighs> I'm, I'm way off. This is Thursday events. So Thursday events starting at 9 a.m. Tiny Tales is going to be at the Mizzou Public Library starting at 10.30 p.m. Easy Steps to eBooks are starting at 12 p.m. in the Mizzou Public Library. This class is introduction and overview of the eBooks resources available in the library. The instructor will cover how to use various e-readers to access the library's collection. Um, make it and take a crafts at Big Sky Branch. Um, afternoon right after school at 2.30 p.m. at the Big Sky High School. You guys can uh, make your own crafts and you can take it home as well. That number is 728-2400-8605. Boom. I got it. I'm remembering because I say it a lot. Uh, predator feeding at the Mizzou Insectarium. MizzouButterflyHouse.org is where you can find out more information about the Mizzou Insectarium. Uh, they're located on Front Street. They'll be feeding a cricket to one of their hungry predators at 3.30 p.m. every Thursday. Uh, you can join us and explore the demonstration how they capture and consume the prey. Come see who is hungry today. Connect Sculptures, um, makerspace at Endeavor Homeschool Learning Center. So the whole idea of Endeavor, it is a, um, I like to think of it as a homeschool educational co-op where a lot of people come together and create their own school. It is create a moving toy that utilizes a crank mechanism up and down, side to side, swinging and flapping motions are possible. Explore simple mechanics while you create mechanical sculptures. Programs um, a Lego using scratch, construct a paper circuit, launch an Elka Celsa rocket, or build cardboard. Uh, first visit free. Uh, five punch pass available for $25 and it's open from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, Gwen Florio is going to be under the shadow, Shakespeare Company, 
This Thursday, Missoula-owned award-winning journalist and author Gwen Florio w- joins us for a debut reading of Under the Shadow, the latest book of her Lola Wicks mystery series. So if you get a nice little readings and meet the author, starting at 7 p.m. at Shakespeare and Company. But of course, if you guys are going out and about tonight, the best thing to do is do some trivia night at the Press Box. Starting at 8.30 p.m., you can do some trivia night starting at around 7.15, 7.30 at the uh, Silver Slipper. Um, Missoula Open Decks, DJ Dance Party is a VFW. Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse Bar. Um, karaoke is also at the Badlander. Um, if you guys are going out on Thursday night, um, you guys can check out uh, the Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival. Uh, Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival kicks off this Thursday, um, going on through this weekend. Two nights of concerts, March 15th and 16th, all-star jazz performers plus top students and college players. UM hosts the 38th annual Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival. Tickets reserved. Um, you can, you know, you, there's $10 for students, uh, $15 for both nights. Seniors get $15, $25 for both nights. Um, any a general public is $25, or if you want to pay $40 for both nights, Thursday night and Friday night. The University of Montana Jazz Program excited to announce that they will be celebrating 38 years of the Buddy DeFranco Festival. Uh, the University of Montana Jazz Program. Um, and the UM Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival will once again welcome some of the greatest international jazz artists along with middle school, high school, and college jazz combos and jazz bands from across the Northwest to the UM campus to learn the language of jazz. The festival records uh, 69 middle schools, high schools, and college jazz ensembles from all over Northwest as far away as Seattle. So they have clinics happening pretty much all all around. Um, so they are hosting phenomenal crew and artists of next month, including award-winning composer Steve Owen, who is a sax player from the University of Oregon. Um, you have Allison Miller, drums from New York. Um, Jazz at Lincoln Center, Reggie Thomas. He's a piano from Chicago. Award-winning performer and composer Michael Conrad. He's a trombone from Denver. University of Northern Colorado, Eric Applegate, bass. And multi-talented Tanya Darby, trumpet from New York and the University of North Texas. So a bunch of artists coming in around the city of Missoula this week for the Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival. And you can enjoy those um, clinics and more by checking out the University of Montana's Denison Theater pretty much all day tomorrow and Friday um, leading up to their concerts those nights around 7.30 p.m. Whew, there's a lot to talk about. But here's a nice little jazzy finish for you guys. Um, I have a dubbing stuff for you guys. So without further ado, here is a brand new a dubbing stuff. And when I come back, um, we'll have, um, I'll just say goodbye. For the last time, this isn't too high for wearing a belt. Many people in my high position wear belts this high, maybe even higher. Do you understand that? Oh! Oogity boogity boo. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you. See, I can be spontaneous too, just like that. <laughs> Did I do that? Well, hello there, General. I see your belt is as high as ever. I don't need your flattery. I don't need to impress you. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Ooh, if you say so, sir. All right, now just what the heck is this all about? <laughs> well, not everything has to be about what? you. Well, what he's trying to say is that it's very important that we're here to tell you all the sorts of wonderful things that you're about to hear from us. <laughs> Are you lonely? Do you feel as though... No, you're... not really, but I don't feel like being set up. <laughs> Sounds like somebody who needs to be set up. We don't mean to set you off, sir. No, 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 never tell a stressed out person whoa, to relax. Whoa, whoa, easy now, sir. I'm only trying to help you. It's really important that you listen to this. Well, I think this letter sums it up pretty well. You have been served, General. Sorry about that. <coughs> My dear Snuggle, <coughs> I waited for you. Uh, don't, uh, uh, you're loving Olga? Uh, how, uh, how embarrassing. Uh, what may that be? <coughs> Where did you get this letter after all? A forgery, that's it. It's completely false. Uh, I gotta go form battle plans. Hey, how's it going, baby? Don't worry, I'll be out soon. Uh, oh. <coughs> just so you guys know, that wasn't actually a forgery. It's just too embarrassing to talk in front of the boys. <laughs> say no more, sir. Oh, I'm gonna say plenty. Maybe you would like to know how she's doing after all. <coughs> Never mind that. Uh, we're not here to blackmail you or anything, um, <laughs> sir, what? Oh, you think you can sit in my chair since you brought that letter? We brought the letter. <laughs> uh, what do you know about my precious Olga? Not much, uh, except her smell, after all. <laughs> oh, that's gross. 
come here for a second. You know, it's very clear that you are kind of embarrassed by this particular letter. So I'm gonna propose... Ooh, it does smell good. Huh? What the? This is a completely different letter. Look at that. Smells the same. Well, smells connected to memory after all. Uh, I've been getting letters? Indubitably, my good chum. This ogre has been sending you letters for a while. Then how come it hasn't reached my hands? Eh, well, it's quite simple, my good chum. Ah, you keep on beating around <laughs> the bush. Good one on you, son. No, 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 no. I refuse to be made a mockery of. <laughs> well, this letter is quite clear on its intentions. Isn't that right? Snuggle pup! Hey, good one. <laughs> I am strong. I am strong. I will not listen to this. It's nice that oh, you're get proud. Off my desk. This is ridiculous. <laughs> ah! Home! Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful couple days. Um, I'll be back Friday to talk about everything Friday, including your flagship Friday video of the week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.